Regrettably, I haven't read your books, but now that I'm hearing you talk about them, I'm going to have to. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm interested myself. And yeah, that's coming from someone who's not necessarily super religious. So it sounds interesting to me, to be honest. Uh, yeah. So and I, well, I, for you, uh, I would recommend the, the second one first, the, the philosophy of Bitcoin and religion. That's the one I would recommend for you first. Gotcha. Yeah, because it sounds to me like that's more of a explaining yeah how like as you said like bitcoin can help actually pr provide proof and etc whereas the first one sounds more like um not a guidebook necessarily but almost like the bitcoin standard for christians in a weird yeah, way that's it's exactly kind of, yeah right exactly yeah yeah that's what it sounded like when i read the the, the summary etc and looked at looked it up um so yeah it seems pretty interesting to me um i suppose yeah definitely the the time between religion and and, and bitcoin and, and obviously it definitely feels like religion is the thing that's kind of helped make this whole project happen as well with, with Bitcoin Lake, because you were there uh, in the first place trying to help with that. And then now, obviously, you, you kind of saw the alignment and said, oh, hey, we can we can actually make this into a sort of further uh, project. Um, it'd be interesting to see, like, for you, what would you what would you say have been some of like the, the, the biggest like challenges, I guess, with the whole Bitcoin Lake side of things, because obviously with the, with the book, there's, there's the challenges that many people can probably imagine. It's like, it's hard to write a book in the first mm -hmm. place and then you've got to get it out there and then you've got to get people to buy it. Um, but with like this kind of project, it's such a new thing to have a Bitcoin uh, community project. It's, I mean, there's only five, six well-known ones around the world. If, mm -hmm. if that. So mm -hmm. like, what, what are some of like the real, challenges being behind this like what's the kind of sticky stuff where you're like oh this is a pain in the ass or, or or whatever that i guess you could enlighten us with i suppose being that you would have experienced it um like the bitcoin beach guys did there's not been any sort of uh why am i doing this sort of thing um i think that what most people don't understand is that it requires a lot of work and um so let me let me explain you know, what we're doing in, how we're doing it in Pond HL. And that, that will maybe kind of describe what I'm, what I'm telling you. So, and, and first of all, um, yes, my faith informs my presence down in Guatemala, but like, I always like to tell people um, what we're doing down with, with Bitcoin Lake is not evangelic at all. So you, people from all over the world, all faiths or backgrounds can come and help. And, you know, we're not going to be talking about Jesus unless you ask me. So um, for anybody who wants to come and help, please come and help. We just had a wonderful couple uh, come up and, you know, there was no religion involved in that at all. So, but so the, I think that for us, the first thing was we had our trust relationships with Nancy already established. She reached out to the community and got meetings with key leaders in the, in the community and in particular with the mayor and so we didn't really, we haven't really faced any political backlash or, or backlash from the community per se. So that, that, that was good. And demographically, Panachel is a community of about 18,000 people. So it's about five times larger than Bitcoin Beach. Um, there are a lot of tourists in the area. Um, the Lake region is home to about 15 or 17 other uh, cities of various sizes around the lake. And Pana Chell is kind of the launching point for a lot of people to come. But, uh, you know, going to the different shop owners and vendors and street vendors, the they're, they're really digitally naive. I mean, they, they may have a cell phone, they may have a smartphone, but it's not like they understand um, a lot about it. They're, it's more of a utility tool. So gotcha. when, yeah. I didn't want to cut you off, but yeah. is, is Guatemala like similar to El Salvador and Colombia where like a great percentage of the population like has no access to the banking system? Yeah, so great question. So it's about 60% uh, lower than in El Salvador, but the, the region that we're in, which is in the Western Highlands of Guatemala, there's a lot, there's a, a much larger indigenous population. So while overall 60%, of Guatemalans, I would suspect that in where we are, it's probably pushing 70% just because of the demographics. Um, and so when you're going to the different vendors and uh, shop owners to kind of describe, you know, what Bitcoin is, what a Bitcoin wallet is, 
there's there's immediate suspicion that's number one because it's a new technology and it's a new money i mean even in the western uh, world we we get that kind of suspicion but um it requires pounding the pavement going literally door to door saying hey this is who we are i'm i i, I make it clear up front i'm a philanthropist there's no fees here i'm not getting anything out of this and um that's the hardest part is it takes time we can't we we've tried to have meetings where we said okay we're gonna we're gonna have a bitcoin meeting and we're gonna teach you about bitcoin and and give you free satoshis but no one comes to those and so it I, in our community, it requires pounding the pavement and pressing and pressing and pressing. And obviously, when you get the no and you get the no and you get the no from the same person over and over, that's going to be a no. But um, we do get no's. We come back and we get yeses. And it's just it's a classic sales job. I mean, you, you just have to be passionate about what you're selling and uh, provide a benefit for the user. And we're doing all that. And you can't sell everything to everybody. And that's kind of how we view uh, the project here. We can't make everybody in Pana Shell accept Bitcoin. And I think the other thing that's kind of challenging for us is we have a chicken egg thing. So, you know, I, with, with Mike Peterson and the Bitcoin beach guys, they, they had a large infusion of Bitcoin to begin with. They started um, using it for UBI, especially during the pandemic. Um, and then they had the wallet technology. So they, they had, they really had everything they, they needed. And for us, we don't have Bitcoin in the community. We're, we're not, we're, we've bootstrapped everything. And so when we walk up and we tell a vendor, you know, we want you to start accepting Bitcoin, the, they're like, well, um, I, no one's asked me to accept Bitcoin. So why do I want to start accepting it now? And then that's when we start talking about the rate of return and using it as a savings technology. But um, that's kind of one of the challenges for us is to, continue to infuse Bitcoin into the community once you orange pill somebody. And that's been a challenge. Uh, we're just now starting to see a trickle of Bitcoin tourists. But, you know, let's face it, Bitcoin Beach kind of sucks up all that because they're so well known. And everybody wants to go there. And I'm not faulting that, but they, they kind of suck all the, the air out of the balloon. And we're just trying to get some folks to come to Pana Chell in the lake, um, which is just a tremendously beautiful area. And it's coming. I think by the summer, later this summer, we'll have many more else, uh, many more Salvadoran visitors that come and want to spend their Bitcoin in, in, uh, in the lake region. Yeah, it's not too far geographically from El Salvador, right? So it's not like a crazy idea to, to visit both if you're, if you're someone who's really interested in doing so. Um, yeah. And then it's month, cheaper too, right? If you have dollars from El Salvador to go spend Quetzales in Guatemala, probably, yeah, uh, yeah. But we, we're what, so what we're trying to do is, yeah, they're next door neighbors, so geographically they're neighbors. Uh, from San Salvador to Panachel, it's about six hours by bus. And um, you know, if you think about it, if if you're going to travel across the state, you're going to go to the airport, spend two hours at the airport, get on the plane, and you know, you'll you'll spend that just traveling across the state. So it's not that big of a big of a deal. What we're trying to do for this next year, adopting Bitcoin Summit in San Salvador, is we would like to, and we've gotten a lot of positive support and feedback on Twitter. Uh, we'd like to have a side trip to uh, Pana Chell. So if you've already been to El Zante and you want to come see what's going on in Pana, uh, we're going to we're going to um, set up a mini adopting Bitcoin seminar in Pana Chell and, uh, you know, arrange for bus transportation and all that. So people can come and actually see the area um, and see something different than um, uh, Bitcoin uh, Beach. Out of curiosity, how many uh, like local business owners have you guys uh, successfully managed to onboard? Oh, it's like over 50 at this point. Um, so we've done since, since January of this year, over 50, uh, we're about to double that number. Um, so effectively in principle, we have about a hundred businesses cause we've, we've brought on a, um, a large motorcycle chain, motor, motor shop chain in Guatemala, uh, to start accepting Bitcoin. So we're, we're super excited about that and more details to follow on that. But the, the, um, the interesting thing about that, Ricardo, is one of my passions or visions for Guatemala is we've got to fundamentally change how we orange peel people in Guatemala. The Guatemalan government is so freaking corrupt, and I, I think it's going to be 
years before they have somebody like a Bukele that would impose a, a Bitcoin legal tender law. So what we're really trying to do and what we're trying to think through, and we've got some really cool ideas that we're, that we're thinking about, but, you know, Bitcoin adoption in Guatemala has got to be from the ground up. And um, I think that's the way Guat Guatemalans would want it. I think that th there would probably be even more backlash to Bitcoin in Guatemala if what Bukele did in El Salvador, because the, the, the government in Guatemala is just, it's, it's really bad. Geographically close, but very different situation politically, it sounds like. Yeah, um, yeah. That's for sure. I mean, I um, if you were, say, I, I'm asking this because obviously I'm interested, but also I think people out there listening might be interested. Say I was going to fly in and, you know, I, I'm not interested in going to El Salvador yet or whatever. I'm going to fly there, whatever. Um, if you're flying in, like, is there an airport nearby? And then do you get like a taxi or like, how, what's the best way to get there from like an airport? Well, what, so you fly into Guatemala City, which is the closest airport um, to Panachel. And that's the capital. And when the visitors that we've had, we actually arrange for people to uh, be picked up. So we'll make sure that somebody meets you at the airport with, and you trust them because you know them and they've got your name on a placard. So we, we basically arrange all that. Now, if you're a savvy world traveler, you can just get on a, um, a private taxi and take it to Panachel, which is about a three hour drive. But, um, you know, we, we try to make sure that if people are coming to visit, we take care of them for sure. No, that makes so, sense. So if anybody wants to come, please reach out to me uh, because we'll make sure that, you know, you're not looking for Waldo. Is Panachel like a, like a backpackers, like hostel kind of like place? Uh, like yep. what are the amenities like for someone that would want to visit out there? Well, you can, you, you have a lot of backpackers through there. So a lot of young uh, kids coming through um, that are hiking you have a lot of hostels, you have Airbnbs, and you even have five-star hotel, uh, Hotel Atatlan, which is an absolutely beautiful um, hotel on the lake. You, I mean, it's really, it's a pretty developed, you know, touristy area. And it's, you know, the, I'll tell you this, though, the food is not that great in Guatemala in particular, but I think that the, the um, I think in particular, uh, a lot of good Guatemalan, and there are good Guatemalan cooks, but I think what happens is there's been a brain drain of good cooks. They, they, um, they don't want to be living in, you know, the backwoods of, of Guatemala. So they, they immigrate or they're working in Guatemala city or something like that. But um, there is good food, um, but don't, don't be surprised if you're, not happy with the food choices. <laughs> Another question that I had is, I know a lot of people travel to Guatemala specifically to see like the Mayan ruins and the pyramids and stuff like that. How close is Panachel to, to those? It depends. Um, I think the closest uh, Mayan ruins are about two hours from Panachel. Um, some of the larger ones in the north of the country are about six hours away. And that's, that's by uh, vehicle. You can fly. There, there are um, smaller airports that you can fly into um, if you want to travel and see some of the larger Mayan ruins. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think when we were in El Salvador, um, it sounds like we were there at the same time because I was there when, for adopting Bitcoin. Um, the food there, I was like, is it better than in Guatemala, did you find? Because I found it pretty good, to be honest, when I was eating it. Yeah, I, 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 have, I, I did think when I was there that the food in El Salvador was better than in Guatemala. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, fair it's enough. not, it's not bad. It's, it's not bad. Don't get me wrong, but um, it's not going to be a culinary experience. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're, not, you're not coming out for the Michelin star. Food, no, is, is no, 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 that's fair enough. Yeah. That makes a, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. I, I, I can understand that to be honest. It's not really a, yeah. a yeah. major thing, I guess. Um, yeah. It sounds like, well, it sounds like you're definitely doing a, a pretty cracking job so far of, of getting things up and running since it's been just January and you've already got 50 and then essentially a hundred or so. Like, do you think, because at the moment, obviously, yeah, it depends who you ask, but realistically, we're kind of entering less of a crazy bullish territory for Bitcoin price. Uh, and, and obviously, the price impacts often new people coming in. It seems like it's not so bad this time compared to the last time, but who knows? Mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you think like, you know, are you, are you kind of concerned about like how that may impact things as a bit tourism? Or do you think are you just seeing it continuing to rise no matter what the price action is? I, th um, I think this is going to help us because when we first started introducing Bitcoin, Bitcoin was about um, 
in the 40s, uh, high 40s. Um, I think it even got up into the mid 50s. And so when the shop owners started seeing the Bitcoin price go down, even though we talk about volatility, you know, um, they were like, what's going on with Bitcoin? And now that it's kind of grinding along, I, I and then, you know, there it's going to go up at some point. So I think for us, as we have stability in the price of Bitcoin, I think that's going to relieve anxiety for the, the Guatemalans. And then obviously, when it shoots up going into the next halving, which, you know, no one can predict, but uh, I think it's going to. Um, I think that's going to really help our case. But I, right now, I think that the grind in the 30s is is um, beneficial for us for adoption, for sure. Uh, Patrick, I wanted to ask, like, what is the average Guatemalan citizen's understanding of Bitcoin? And I know you're kind of a maxi, but like, do are they interested in other uh, cryptocurrencies as well? That's a great, those are two good questions. So the, the first understanding is that they know they've heard of Bitcoin, but they don't really understand it. And so they, un, they know about Bitcoin because of what's going on next door in El Salvador. So that that's given us a opportunity to say, well, Hey, you know, here's what's going on in El Salvador. Do you want to learn about Bitcoin? And that, that opens the door for us. Now, as far as being a maxi, no, they don't, they don't, most of them are, have not been introduced or they barely know about Bitcoin. So they don't really know about um, the other um, crap coins out there. The now, and that, that presented a challenge for us because there was another project um, around the lake that was crypto at And we were adamant that, you know, and we, we had a couple of exchanges that want, wanted to, um, wanted us to participate with them and invite and do some work with them. But we just did not want to expose Guatemalans to inflationary coins. Um, I mean, they're already trusting us to talk about a new type of money. And, you know, the, the case in point with Luna, that would have been tragic had a uh, local Guatemalan put their money in Luna um, seeking yield or whatever. Um, so, so they're, they're not very aware of it, but it's like everything else, you know, as soon as we get a lot of traction, um, you know, the, the, the shitcoin casino guys are going to start coming moving in on on the territory. So, um, anyway, that's uh, that's going to come, and we just we just have to educate, educate, educate. I know with Bitcoin Beach, like they made the community aware that they were accepting donations in Bitcoin. Like, is there a way that people can donate to Lake Bitcoin? Yes. So on our Twitter feed, Twitter handle, we have a Bitcoin address, and on our webpage. Uh, bitcoinlake.io you can donate there as well and you can see who else is involved in the in the project and um i don't know if we're going to talk about it but i definitely want to talk about our our philosophy and our bitcoin mining project that we're that we're working into as well mm -hmm.